Happy Friday, everybody. How's it going? All right, I'm gonna get my laptop over here. That way I can see. Oh, I'm just taking a deep breath. It's been, it's been a week. I don't know about y'all, but it happens. This, these weeks absolutely fly by, fly by. And I will tell you, um, hey sissy, hey Ann, hey guys. Um, I'm just gonna give you just a, f a few minutes, just a few minutes to be able to just kind of pop on here. I, you know, I was thinking about as an adult, hey Becky, as an adult, hey Linda, you know, Christmas for me, and you're not a child anymore, when there's really not surprises, and when you're all about being the one that's creating the surprises for everybody, you're wrapping the presents for everybody, and so you're kind of like, when, you know, what is Christmas for me as an adult? It definitely doesn't have to be on um, December 25th. Things like today are Christmas for me. Of course, I love them. I'm not talking about philosophical things about the meaning of Christmas. Of course not. But when I am introducing product that I absolutely positively love, and I know that it can make a difference in the way you're going to be painting furniture, the way you're building your business in painting furniture, and how you are refinishing furniture, all of that. I know what a game changer this is. So, I know I, I talk to y'all and I tell you, I'm really bad at keeping secrets. I'm really bad at when I, when I have something that I know that I'm, I know that's gonna, you're gonna be excited about, I'll tell you, and then y'all all come back and go, when are you doing this? When is she doing this? So I've been working on this for a while. So I am so excited to introduce all of these new milk paint colors to you. And I'm gonna show you today just a slight difference in the antiquing process and with these colors, I'm just gonna tell you, I'm looking at all of them, they're laying here, and they are absolutely, positively, divine 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 they're nothing like the other colors that we had done this this is kind of like rock your world when we talk about furniture finishing so i'm going to turn this down for just a second and i want to talk about the colors i want to talk about what my thought process was behind it but also i don't want you to judge them like this because guess what all of them except one they've just been painted on here nothing's been done to them and it's a process. It's not just about painting, but look at this one. Can you see this? Look at this color. Oh my goodness. Look at that. I hope this shows up on these camera. This is absolutely to die for. To die for. This one, and it's so funny. The other thing is I love creating new colors because I get to name them. I don't know about y'all. Amy's needing a manicure, but when I go to the place to get a manicure, I'll wait, they always know. It's like, I always get, I can only wear OPI. But look at this. This one is called Party in the Grove because we're in Memphis. Ole Miss has the Grove. And all the time before football games, everybody parties in the Grove. So I was like, I'm going to name this Party in the Grove. So they all have some type of connection um, to me and my life. And I have a blast doing it. So I want to show you all these colors and so many of them are complementary to one another and they're absolutely divine. So let's do this. So I'm gonna turn this down. Now I will tell you what I did. I know in introducing six new, 16 new colors and I'll, I've already had people say, but Amy, what about a red? Amy, what about, I'm just like, I'm doing them. You're gonna get them. But I thought, what would be a great collection to be able to introduce? And these are all so complementary to one another and they're beautiful. They're a beautiful collection that I decided to go on and launch with these, but I am working on introducing more, so stay tuned. I know when you come into the world of milk paint, nothing's like it. It's pretty spectacular. All right, so I'm gonna turn this down, and here's the deal. Are you ready for this? If you share this video, and I usually I say if you tag some friends, but if you share this video, I want this video to go, I want more shares on this than ever before, because guess what? I'm going to send the winner that we draw your name, only because you share the video and you told friends about it, 
to, and you can't share it on the before and after page. You have to share it with your friends. Share the video and your name will go on for drawing and I am going to give away the sample pack of every single color. I'm gonna give away the sample pack so that way you will have one of the samples of every one of these colors so you'll see all 16. So I put that together Gene was so mad at me. He was like, Amy, that is so much work to do that. And I'm like, but here's the deal. I want to be able to do it so that way they can, they can test it. They can do a picture frame. They can work on a project. They can paint samples like this. And um, it will allow you an opportunity, one, to be able to pick your favorites. So I, I'm just going to turn this down. I want to be able to show you. So, all right, so here we go. Still say hey. Still talk to me. And then as we go through this, and then I'm going to take you through the process of breaking this out. And then I want you to be able to see the difference. I wish you could see them in person because they really are so pretty. So one of the first colors is, um, this is called Summer Bonfires. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to create colors that could be complementary with one another. That one, either you could put them underneath and antique them and have them show through. You could paint the drawers, you could stripe them. And so this one is Summer Bonfires and this one is Southern Gentleman. Summer Bonfire, Southern Gentleman. I'm just gonna tell you guys, this Southern Gentleman, I'm gonna antique this. I'm gonna antique two of these. I'm gonna do a lighter one and a darker one because I want you to see how much they change in the milk paints. Nothing is done to this yet, so please don't judge it. This is just, I just mixed the paint and painted it on top of here. So you're gonna see a major change. But I wanted to talk about the colors. All right, so two of the next colors. This one is absolutely to die for it. This is called Central Park. It's one of those colors. I mean, you could do kitchen cabinets with this. Um, it'd be a great piece of furniture. It would look great in a nursery. It'd be great in an entry hall. It's just a, it's a much lighter air feeling color. Feeling color. This is Central Park. This one is just a gorgeous, um, kind of a creamy color. Our Strasburg White is whiter. This is more creamy. This is called My Linen Apron. Then next to that, we have um, a deb debutante dance. This is a really pale, 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 pale rosy pink, which could look great in so many areas. Rose is being used so much more. Now, when I antique this, it's going to totally change. If you don't want to antique them, guys, you can just put the matte sealer on top of it, or you can do the tonic on top of it, or you can just do the clear wax. You don't have to go through the antiquing process. Um, so I told you Central Park. Now I did do a little bit of antiquing on this. This is called Party in the Grove, one of my faves. I just love really dark colors. I think they're very dramatic. And then next to him is As I'll Get Out. Yes, we say that around here. Somebody was laughing. It was like, do you say, yes, we say that. As I'll Get Out. Um, I don't know if it's a Southern thing. Does it, has anybody else ever says As I'll Get Out? Um, but this is a great color. Look how complimentary. They're not antiqued yet, but these actually go together really well with your artwork. Um, this is Heaven Help Us. It's just a really great looking darker lilac there is some um kind of aubergine tones to it when this gets antiqued and when you put wax on it it goes a lot lot darker this one is my herb garden it's a gorgeous gorgeous green this is going to be one of the most popular greens i assure you because there's so many grandma looking pieces so many really vintage looking pieces that this will look absolutely to die for on and this one is butterfly kisses Jean always gave my girls butterfly kisses at night. Um, this, again, has a little bit of aubergine uh, lilac to it, but once it's antiqued, it's absolutely to die for. You have to start a little lighter when you're actually going to be doing um, milk paint colors. This one is Wisteria. You're going to love this antiqued as well. We went into a topier family. This is called Sunday Suppers. In the South, we have Sunday Suppers. A lot of times that's at lunch. Sometimes for people, it's after five but that's something that we do here. But um, this is gonna be a yummy color, another favorite that you guys are gonna love. This one is A Praying Wife. And it has some of, you'll see, you'll look at them, look at the difference as far as it's a lot darker. And the colors that they're complementary with are much more different. And then we have another kind of rose color. This one is called Daddy's Girl. 
And I can't remember if I showed you these two over here. We have two more greens. This one is called Putting on the Ritz, and this one is Topiary. So now it shows you the colors. You're able to see a lot of different ones. This collection is absolutely yummy. Uh, that's all I've got to say. It's absolutely yummy. I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit more. I want you to be able to see it. And when you are going through the antiquing process, now I'm gonna pull this one out and I'm gonna show you, oh, let me see, what color do I wanna do? I'm, I am really in love. I just love this. Do y'all love that? Do y'all just love really dark milk paint colors? They are just so yummy. If you want to be able to create an authentic looking finish that are going to make people just ooh and ah, this is how you do it. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to probably take these two colors. Again, this one is Central Park. This one is Southern Gentleman. I'm going to antique these I'm going to, and, I, and wax them and I want you to see the transformation that we're going to have. So I'm going to push these to the side really quick. And if you didn't know, we introduced our milk paint colors yesterday and we put together a bundle that allows you to be able to get a small sample pot of every one of them so that way you can see what they look like. Now, I wanna take you through the process. If you've not watched me before, I have tons of videos on mixing it. So the powder paint, the milk paint, is mixed one part powder to one part water. And you'll wanna mix it up and then that way, sometimes you can mix it up the night before and you want to be able to make sure that there's no pits in it, that it's stirred up. You can also put it in a mason jar and shake it up, but I just want to make sure that you don't have any loose granules in it. Sometimes I'll strain it with a little bit of cheesecloth, but if you keep it in the powder form, it's good forever. So it'll come in a bag like this and it's just one part paint, one part powder. I mean, one part of the powder paint and one part of the water and mix it up. I usually use warm water. Um, this is cracked gesso. Now, cracked gesso will go on first if you want to actually crack your paint. You will not see it crack when it's dry, but when you actually go through the antiquing process, that's when it will show up. But the main reason for this video today is I wanted to go over color, and I wanted to be able to let you see when there's a there, uh, the three-part process. When it's in a powder form, um, which, by the way, Michelle... Would you mind, bring me Southern Gentleman in powder and bring me Central Park in powder. And let's show them. So, when you see milk paint, when you see my milk paint in a powdered form, when you add water, it's gonna go a lot darker. But then when it dries down, it will, get, it will be very, very close to the actual powder. That's why a lot of times on the website, oh, thank you. Central Park. That's why on the website, I will normally show you the powder. So here's the powder, look at this. So you see, once it's dried down, it's almost identical. So when you're looking on it, you'll be able to tell. So it's gonna go a lot darker when you add the water, but then when you paint it and when it dries, it's going to um, be almost identical. Now, here's the other thing you need to notice. A lot of people will say, Amy, what's the difference between a milk paint and a one step? One step is opaque, one step is solid. Milk paint has, just looking at it, guys, I haven't done anything to this. I haven't antiqued it or anything. And look at it. It's got so much depth that a lot of that is true also because we don't use synthetic pigments. All of my pigments come from Provence. Um, I have to air ship them here. And I just am not going to compromise on the quality of the paint that I'm going to be able to do. In a lot of companies that you'll see, they, use, they just use synthetic man-made pigments. And these are all natural from quarries that we get from Provence. So let me just show you. And here is the Central Park pigment. So see, once it's mixed up and once it dries, they're almost identical. Do you not absolutely adore this color? Isn't it yummy? All right, so let's, let's antique this really quickly. So... Maybe I'll do the lighter one, so maybe it'll show up a little bit more on, on the camera for you. All right, so I've actually done this earlier. I've got some dirty water. I'm going to have my water, and it's not really dirty, dirty. It's not saturated with paint yet, and I'm going to use my antiquing glaze. Now, on this, I don't want it really, really heavily antiqued. I just want to, I want to get a little bit of wear to it. So I'm going to use a little bit of my antiquing glaze that I poured in this glass. 
And I'm gonna get my natural seawall sponge. I put it in my water and you see it's, it's very pliable. And then I'm gonna dip it in my antiquing glaze. And I'm just going to, you. here's the fun thing is, you can antique this and you don't have to use any sandpaper because it will look natural. Now this only has one coat, this only has one coat of paint on it. So I'm gonna go really easy. Now pardon me for the sound. I'm gonna get my hair dry and I'm gonna dry this. One, I want you to see it, how it's drying down. Look. See how when I will antique that, and then it's going to go back to that original color. And it's going to have some texture to it. All right, I'm going to give that just a minute. To, to let it dry, air dry a little bit more naturally. And then I'm gonna show you this darker color. I'm gonna antique just a little bit, not a lot, because it's already got a lot of texture to it. So I'm just gonna dab a little bit of my antiquing glaze on here like this. And believe it or not, what it will do, it will also, even if I don't wear it, it'll give me some splotchiness to the color. I'm in love with this color. It'll give me some splotchiness and some depth and a little bit of wear. So let's draw this with a hairdryer. Sorry, we're watching paint dry, literally. Now look at this one. It's already starting to kind of dry down. Look at the depth from our color on that. Isn't that fabulous? I don't, I'm not gonna be really cruel. I don't want y'all to have to wait. I'm gonna set that down. I want you to have to listen to that hair dryer. Now, let's take another color. Let's take, let's take this green. We don't have to antique this if we don't want to. We can create some depth with this green without the antiquing glaze. Now look at this. This is a much lighter color, but look at already. See by doing the antiquing, the, the glaze on here, how it gives you depth, where it almost looks like it's three or four different colors going on. But now let's do the green, and we're just gonna use some light antique wax. This is a combination of carnauba and beeswax. The beeswax is what gives it that natural color. And I'm gonna load it up. I wanna make sure that I have a chip brush. Always have a chip brush with, for your light wax and your dark wax, you don't wanna mix them. And guys, you don't have to clean these brushes out every time you use them. You're using it with wax. The wax isn't gonna harden that much. You can clean it with a clean slate. If you wanna clean your brush, a lot of times, you can just put some saran wrap around this if you want. But what I do want you to do, if you don't wanna clean the brush out, you put the saran wrap around it. So just offload just a little bit like this. I don't want you to go from straight from your can of light antique wax onto your sample. I want you to offload it, that way it gets it evenly distributed and you don't have such an excess of wax because this is what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to have a whole lot of wax that you're putting on here. I want it to just be almost like butterfly kisses. So let's look at this. So I'm gonna just barely, I'm gonna barely put this wax on, look at this because what you're gonna notice, it's gonna have a little lighter color and a little darker color. Look at this. I don't want you to saturate it. Don't, don't pounce it and try to get it down in all the crevices. You wanna be able to just have it to where it's highlighted. Oh, look at this, let's take another one of the 16 colors, the new ones. Let's do this, look at this. How I can just kind of come back with just a little bit of the wax and it's gonna give me some depth even without antiquing it. Let's get a let's get a lilac color. Look at this. I'm gonna offload it. Look at this. I'm, let's do the side of it. And you're gonna see what I'm gonna talk about. Look at this. Look at this. Now I haven't even added the dark wax. 
So here's, here's the side that I put the wax on. No wax. See the depth? Look at this. See the difference? So you don't always have to antique it if you don't want to. You can just come back and use some light wax and dark wax and get some depth so you've got a gorgeous color. It's gonna bother me, so I'm just gonna have to go in and finish the whole thing. But I'm using very little wax. I wanna make sure that I dry brush it. Please don't, you can ruin your project so quickly, guys, if you have too much wax. Now, I'll tell you what would be really good. Could I have some Dust of Ages? I know I told you I didn't want any before I went live. Some Dust of Ages would be really pretty down in this, as would a, just a little bit of dark wax. So I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna take a totally new brush, and I'm after my, after my light wax has come to tack, when, if it's greasy, don't apply the dark wax. I'm gonna go on and just put a little bit on this brush, like this. Again, get another piece of cardboard off low, like this. A little dab will do you on this, and then I'm gonna come around the edges kind of some of the raised areas where it would have gotten dirty and add just a little bit of detail. Look at that. Yummy. I could have, if I wanted to, I could have come back in and distressed this just a little bit so I have more white showing through. But I like to be able to experiment and have different colors, some that are a little bit more antique than others. Look at this. Totally different, but look at that. The depth of this finish, guys. And again, when we talk about the difference between one-step paint and milk paint, you have to seal the milk paint. The one-step, you don't have to. Not if you don't want to. It's a matte finish, so it will have a tendency to get dirty. But if you want to be able to just create texture like this, this is perfect. But look at that color, isn't that yummy? All right, let's revisit. Let's go back to what I did. Remember the color that we did earlier? This is one of the new colors called Central Park. And I'm gonna come back with my light wax, my light antique wax. Let's all float it, thank you. Guys, if you're just now popping on, um, this is an introduction of showing you all of the brand new 16 milk paint colors that are rocking my world, that I love. They're killing Jean Howard. And I am showing you just with some, a little bit of antiquing, a little bit of light wax, dark wax, and maybe a little bit of dust of ages. You're gonna have all these brand new yummy colors that you're gonna be able to create the most amazing finishes with. And if you share this video, sharing is caring. If you share this video, we are gonna be giving away an entire bundle of every color, all 16 colors, the sample bundle, we're gonna be giving that away. So look at that. Look what a major difference that made. Look at this. Now, I did do a little bit of my light wax on this. Now let's add just a little bit of dust of ages. Now here's the other key. I've told y'all this time and time again. And I really want you to go easy. When you are doing Dust of Ages, you cannot put the Dust of Ages on when the wax is too wet. It's going to be a problem. You've got to make sure when you touch it that it's not greasy, that it's not moving around, but that it is such that it's almost like it's almost completely dry. If I put my Dust of Ages on before this has a chance to come to what we call tack, it's going to make the dust of ages go where it looks almost black and it's not going to be pretty. We're not gonna like it. So I'm gonna fan this just a second. I wanna fan it because I wanna be able to get tack. Now you cannot use a hairdryer. You need to be able to use something to fan it or just let it sit to be able to come to tack. Now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna use a a clean brush again, always offload it, load it up and then offload just a little bit. And I'm gonna come down in here like this. 
Now I'm going to need a rag to buff. I'm going to add just a little bit on this one. Guys, this is kind of like the finishing touch. If you've not done Dust of Ages in the past, you're missing out on really being able to create furniture type finishes that interior designers, you, it, it, let's just say it's just for you. You want to be able to have finishes that people are going, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've never seen anything like that. I've chalk painted for years. How do you do this? And it's all about a process. It's not a real difficult process, but it is a process. So you see how much, how much dust of ages I've got on. Now, I'm going to buff this while the dust of ages is sitting on there. Don't take it all off. Buff it with it on there because it acts as a buffing agent. Look at this. Now, before your eyes, gosh, I wish y'all were here. I wish you could be sitting across from me and go, wait a minute, Amy, I have to touch that. Because only until the final point of doing this do you go, okay, I get it now. That's what's kind of fun with my students. It's like, okay, I didn't know. I try to cut corners. Look at this. Does this show up? I try to cut corners, Amy, but now I get it. Like, now I'm creating furniture finishes that look absolutely yummy. Look at that. See how it's lighter down in here? We've got a little bit of dust of ages. It almost looks like we've got four or five different colors of paint on here. We just did one. This is Central Park. Now, is this yummy? See how when you come in and you add the dust of ages and you do the antiquing, it looks like it's gotten dirty, like oil from your hands, you know, have touched it over a period of time. Now, let's look at our other one. This is before buffing. Let's look before buffing the dust of ages off. See how much I've got on here? This is party in the grove. Now, we're always going to make sure that the dust of ages is on there. See if you don't, if you don't buff it too much. But we've got to buff it to where we're going to get a sheen. Kind of like we're buffing a shoe. Oh my gosh, this is absolutely to die for. To die for. Don't buff it to get down in the crevices. We're just staying on the high parts because we want to get that sheen to where it looks like somebody has touched that over a period of time. Look at that. Is that so fab? This is Party in the Grove. New color milk paint, guys. I'm loving it. Look at these two together. Yum. E. Yummy, yummy, yummy. And let's just finish out one more. This is our Butterfly Kisses. Now, you're going to be really surprised. This looks totally different. Totally. Once you wax it and you do your Dust of Ages, it goes more into an eggplant. Look at this. Look at this. Isn't that fab? It's much more subtle. This is all, all about being subtle, yummy, beautiful colors that look like antiques that allow you to be able to take something from ex just ordinary to extraordinary. Because when you paint it on, it looks pretty plain. But then you're able to add the elements. Look at this. See how that, that goes into a furniture finish. It goes from plain to this, to where it looks like it's got all this age, where it's absolutely spectacular. So, you know, I tell y'all this, you know I absolutely love milk paint because I know, I'll, I like my milk paint because I know the look that I'm going for. I know the look that I want. I know the look that sells. I know. <laughs> Y'all kill me. Y'all are so funny when I read your comments. I know what designers want. 
I know what they're willing to pay money for. I know clients, when they see things, when they go in antique shops, when they go in high-end interior design shops and they see finishes like this, guys, they're on pieces of furniture that are selling for thousands and thousands of dollars. Why not rescue and restore the furniture that we're seeing at estate sales and garage sales and create these gorgeous pieces that really and truly, when you look at them in person and you feel them, you're like, oh my gosh, there's nothing like this. So you are going to fall in love with these 16 new colors. You're gonna have some favorites. I love all of them. It's like saying, which one of your children do you love the most? You love all your children. These are all of my children. I love them. And I, I know that each and every one of them can have a beautiful place in a beautiful home with a mommy and a daddy that's gonna love their piece of furniture that has a gorgeous color. And I will tell you, we do get really jazzed with colors. And there's a lot of them in here that are very, very beautiful that I'm excited to see how each and every one of you as my students is going to rescue a piece of furniture and transform it with this incredible new color collection of our milk paints. I hope you have a fabulous Friday. I hope that um, your weekend is restful and glorious, but that you're able to get in maybe just one or two estate sales or go to your favorite antique mall. Have a great weekend, everybody. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Mwah.